everyone welcome to a new video today we're going to look at the first quarter that I have spent in my reading journals this year so I have two books here I have my usual reading journal and then my long terms collection that I have been utilizing um, we're going to look at this one first the one that I normally share on the channel and then we'll have a quick look at the other one but let's get into the first quarter spent in this journal Today I'm filming is the 28th of March, so I'm not quite finished with March, but you'll get the idea of how things are going. So starting off with the cover page, um, it's not going to change at all this year, but I just thought we'd start here. I really love how this turned out. It's still one of my favorite things that I put in this journal. The great thing about blackout paper is that it's quite aesthetic to look at, um, but there are definitely challenges and I've mentioned that a few times in several of my videos now. Um, I do plan on continuing with my honest thoughts about using this paper as well as um, giving hints and tips on how to work with it. I've come up with some really great ideas and I'm going to do a little video of what works well on black paper, at least what I've experienced, so do check out that sometime in April. So this is my Goodreads challenge page and I have a goal of 150 books to read this year. Last year I read over 200 so I've brought it down to have a bit more of a relaxing year. It's still quite a lofty goal and as of recording this on the 28th of March I have 42 books read so far. Things that I wish that I had changed about how I use this page is, as you can see, I haven't yet put any black um, writing on top of the month of March, and I actually prefer that. I can still see what number I'm up to by looking at the box next to the colored one, um, and I wish that I hadn't gone ahead and written on top here. I have tried to go over with a pen and fix this with the, each color, but unfortunately it hasn't really worked out in my favor so I'm not sure if I'm going to just leave it like that and call it a failure and then just continue the rest of the year as I have with March or eventually right over top but for now I'm just going to leave it as is. Here is the bookshelf so far um, and it is up to date I believe. Yes, so um, a lot of colors uh, a lot more color this time round. Um, if you followed me last year I had only five colors for my color code and this year I have gone by 0.5s as well so I've got an entire um, key here and unfortunately <laughs> I seem to read a lot of four star books which is great for um, my rating and um, it's good that I'm reading enjoyable books but it does still make the shelf look mostly one color um, there is a lot of purple on the bookshelf so far but I'm hopeful that um, as time moves on I can see a bit more of a um, color variation uh, but at the end of the day isn't a four star read and above a good thing so it means that I'm having a mostly enjoyable year aside from these uh, couple of <laughs> two star ones that we've got sitting here so you saw that we've got an extra page here to fill in and that one as well. On this side here we have the Days Red Pixel and I'm really enjoying filling this in this year. Uh, it's been great to have the actual grid on the page. Last year I just um, had the outline of the grid and would individually fill in and the lines wouldn't match up. So having already spent the extra time putting in the grid at the beginning of the year has really helped this page look more effective and I'm loving the color scheme as well. Uh, it's really like really eye-catching to look at and um, yeah not much more that I can really say about this page but I am enjoying it. Can't wait to see the rest of it all filled in. Moving on to my challenges of the year. So we have the author A to Z challenge and the 23 books in 2023. I'm really happy with how this author challenge is going and I can see myself 
almost finishing this by June if I dedicate trying to find um, authors that have last names that start with some of these harder letters. I think X is going to be a problem and maybe O, but the rest of them I'm pretty sure I can cover with some authors, so I'll have to look into that. But overall, we're only into the third month now of the year. And I've got this far. I'm, I'm really impressed with this challenge. It's been so much easier than um, the author challenge being done. Uh, sorry, the A to Z challenge being done by book title. That was um, that was quite difficult. So having it done by author, um, there was a lovely subscriber or follower that um, wrote a message how about doing an author challenge instead. And I'm grateful for you because. This has turned out fantastic. And then over here, um, if you didn't um, follow me beforehand or you haven't seen that I've only filled in half the year, I decided this year that instead of doing a list at the start of the year of all the books that I potentially wanted to read over the year of 2023, um, I'm only going to do the first half and then in July fill in the rest because my tastes changed dramatically from the start of last year to the end of the year and there were several books on that list that really made me drag my feet and not want to complete it so I decided to set myself up for success and put down just only half now and then the rest later and so far I've only finished three of the books on the list however a lot of these I either have the copy on my shelf so I'm good to go or um, it's pre-ordered so very excited to hopefully see a lot more pink but, um, circles filled in the next time I do one of these quarterly flip, flip throughs. And then we've got two new challenges for the year. So we've got the TBR book of the month and read the rainbow. So each month I have a book down that I have to read. So far I've done really well staying on track and I have um, completed all the first three books. I'm hopeful that I will continue to have decent reviews or reads at least with all of them. Um, I'm not looking forward to my birthday month which is June. Um, when I pulled out House of Sky and Breath I was quite disappointed. Not because I'm sure it's going to be an awful book or anything. It's probably going to be great um but just the length of it it wasn't really one that I wanted to like have myself committed to but I suppose I need to read it at some point and I might as well have a scheduled point for it read the rainbow is pretty self-explanatory I've got these boxes here that are all different colors and the cover of whatever book that I read and um, if it matches one of these colors I can stick it in I've had some thoughts about how to do this so um over february i didn't add any to it even though i could have with the orange and the yellow just simply because i like the fact that i've gone with covers that are all one color and then the drawing uh sorry the graphics on top um so i want to try and complete it that way rather than have a book that's got multiple tones of color um, and multiple different colors on it that um, it only represents half the book if that makes sense that's how I'm going to try and do it obviously if I get to the end of the year and I haven't yet been able to find one but I've got a book that's predominantly yellow or something like that and it's only got like a sliver of the corner gone I'll choose that but for the most part I'm actually quite fortunate that I have most of these colors sorted um, I just need to read the books And then we are into our first month. So here was January's theme and each month of the year I'm swapping between a fantasy theme and a romance theme and for the first month of the year I went with Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Uh, it was one of my favorite books of last year so I definitely added it to this one and I actually enjoyed um, the whole bookish vibe to start off with the year. I think it was a nice touch. If you can hear rain pouring down outside, it is storming, so I do apologize. It's trying to hail as well, um, but I don't have much time to film this otherwise this week, so please bear with me, even in my pajamas, because it's so cold tonight. Um, moving on from the cover page, um, this 
has been a really good change for me. So last year I did, oh gosh, that's loud. <laughs> Um, last year I did the monthly view but I didn't have arcs on this page and I did have the book haul on this page and I think I had another bar for something else but I cannot remember off the top of my head what it was. Um, this year I have put these three things together so we've got the calendar, this is where I write down the percentage of each day of what I've read um, and I have a colour coordination key, colour key sorry. Um, for each of them. This month I went with just the um, circles, those colours represented it and then wrote all in red but in the subsequent month I actually changed it up because it was still quite challenging to look at at a glance and figure out which one was an ebook, which one was an audiobook and then along the side here we've got um, the arc list which has been the best place to put it because I view this page almost every day so if I run out of um, ideas of what to read next and I've got something that I haven't yet read on my arc list it'll be sitting here unchecked and I can pick that up straight away and hopefully I can continue on with putting down the books that I buy or get gifted um, from friends or what have you in this section here um, over February I forgot so I've managed to do it over March let's hope I can continue on here is my what I always call as the info dump, info dump page. Um, so we always have the TBR, my TBR jar prompts. List goes here, buddy reads and library borrows are here. I really like having this all together because it makes it easier again to go through and make sure that I've checked things off that I know that I want to do each month. And this page worked out quite well. And for the month of January, I managed to complete my TBR, which was the first time in a while. <laughs> Moving on to the reading log. And this year I decided to go with keeping the color key at the beginning for um, the star rating right through. So all my stars are color coordinated with the color that represents them. I haven't changed that throughout each month and I think I'll continue that for the rest of the year. It's been really helpful. And a new change to the way I set up my monthly um, look is the stats page. I've gone from just having the one page and then a massive collage to having um, more to look at and more stats. Um, I got rid of my favorite read that used to be on the cover page and I've just got now down the bottom here a favorite read, least favorite read um, and I've got just the space here for stats. This is really helpful when I'm filming these videos or also um, doing things for my bookstagram. And I've condensed down the collage and instead of putting it in order from most liked book to least liked book, um, this is now in from when I read it. So that was the first book of the year, the last book of January, that kind of thing. And I've introduced um, a bar graph system down here for the star ratings and for my genres that I read each month, which is going quite well so far. I accidentally missed this page. It was not meant to happen, but I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to put down all the book club reads here, so we might set that page up together in the near future. February was the first romance book of the um, yeah, and I went with Set on You by Amy Lee, one of my favorite romance reads of last year. And um, I utilized my Cricut for this, for the stickers, and I knew exactly what I wanted to have as my theme. Uh, and I really went quite curated with this. I ended up not going with like the typical aesthetics that was on Pinterest. I searched specifically for photos. Um, that felt like would fit this um, and I definitely had to get a bathtub in there if you know you know um, I also got um, acrylographs for Christmas just one pack and this was my first time using them and I was quite impressed 
So this, the setup each month is roughly the same, just with different decoration and colour. Um, as you can see, I went quite Valentine's on this, and I didn't write down the books that I got. And you can see that the key, as I mentioned, has changed colours, so I can see right away where I read a audio book because it was white, and pink represented the ebook. And down here, I actually didn't read very many of my arcs, um, but it was good to have that there so I could utilise what I needed at the time. And the great thing about the paper that I found so far is that you can see that on camera right now because the light is shining on it, but when there's no light shining on it, the mistakes that I make in here aren't as noticeable as it would be in a white um, paper book, which is one of the plus signs to having this black paper, um, is that you can fix mistakes a little bit easier than you would otherwise. Um, but I'm really enjoying how this page turned out. Obviously I didn't read nearly as much and I did not complete my TBR over February. I actually read the same amount of books but I had less pages read um, over the month of February. Both January and February had 14 books. And moving on, here is the stats again done with the same setup. And we're now into March. And my theme for March was uh, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Uh, one of my, again, a good read of last year. Uh, and I really wanted to do something quite decadent. And I used my um, gold vinyl to make the headers, which was my favorite thing about this month's setup. It was so easy to do. And whilst it was a little bit time consuming to put them all down, it's just so neat and tidy. And I will definitely be using, uh, using this um, technique again. And I would have to say, I think um, Erin Smith Art, I think that's her name. Um, she actually showed this way of journaling on her channel um, when she was using her Cricut. And um, that's what made me go, I can do that too. I've got a Cricut. So I'm very, very impressed. And I just tried to keep this one quite clean and simple because I wanted it to be quite elegant looking. As you can see, I've got my headers all around on here and um, gone with another key with different colors down here for the monthly view and so far doing okay with my arcs i'm not going to be able to read the stolen throne this month but i am currently reading the alice curse and again writing down the books that i have hauled um, over the month of march here we are with the final show of another info dump page for this video and um, I'm currently on the go. I'm with C Crazy Stupid Bromance. And I haven't yet picked up the last book on my TBR. And I don't think I'm going to be able to complete this TBR this month, considering the date. But I'm trying quite hard to at least um, finish my arc that I'm reading and Crazy Stupid Bromance. Which, that one, you'll get to hear all about in the um, end of the month reading update. Pulling out all these little pieces of wax paper that I store in here. Um, here is the reading log for the month. And so far I have read 14 books, so it seems to be a trend. However, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to complete at least one more um, this side of um, the month. And yeah, we're on the 28th, so that's like three days. Yeah, three days to finish something. So hopefully I'll have the Alice Cursed at least here. And I don't have my stats page set up. And for a quick sneak peek, here is my April setup. You'll be able to watch the video, it's already up on the channel. But that is this journal setup so far and how I've utilized it. Let's have a quick look at the um, long terms collection that I use for storing more tracking. So here we go, we're in to this journal. I also showed the flip through of this at the start of the year. Um, all the links will be down in the description below. Can't really talk today, can I? Um, right, that one's got the quote. That quote is from um, These Twisted Bonds or These Hollow Vows, one of them by Lexi Ryan. Skipping over my book birthday page. Um, and we are now into the stats. I have written down in the grey here 
all the stats from 2022 and then I'm writing down um, the current stats of the year in um, the metallic blue. Now there's pros and cons to this book. The paper is incredibly thin and I wasn't really thinking about how that would affect me in some ways. There's a couple of mistakes that we're going to see but also I have been utilizing these pens here. This is the pink version but um, I have a blue and a purple. It is the Pilot G2 um, ink pen and they are great because they don't seem to bleed through the paper and I'm happy with how that's looking. Um, there's a bit of shadowing now and then but overall it's going well. However when I'm filming videos and I have the light hitting it in a certain way um, sometimes you can't see the information that's on the page and that is a huge mistake on my behalf because I didn't think about that and went with it for myself which is great it is for me but I am sharing this book each month so I'm not sure how I'm going to keep combating that but I don't want to change the pens because I've done a pretty like consistent job throughout the book. Uh, I've only DNF'd three books so far this year. I really want to DNF a fourth one, but it is um, one that I'm going to persevere with. There's nothing wrong with the writing so much. It's just an issue that I'm having with the storyline. And um, I'm going to take one for the team because everyone else in the book club has DNF'd it. So I can do the summary at the end of it since I'm kind of hosting it. So yes, um, only three so far, which I think is great. And I haven't reread anything yet, but there's plenty of space there for it. So the idea about this book is that it's not just for 2023. It's something that I can continue to use after if I feel like it. Um, and considering the pricing of bringing uh, journals into New Zealand through shipping, I might just continue it because I don't really um, want to spend a great deal of money on journals, especially when I don't just do reading journals. I also have an everyday one. So I'm still um, trying to consider what my options will be for next year, but we're only in March, so I've got a lot of time to decide on that. Here is my art list, and I'm pretty sure while I have you here, we can quickly check off a couple that I've already completed since I shared this page, and I will have to come back through and um, make sure that I add a couple onto here because I think I've had um, at least one more the Alice Curse is not on here so I have to add that on but we'll do that together um, at the end of March through the wrap up and we've got plenty of room for arcs here the series tracker if you followed me last year this was something that I was going to can for the year of 2024 uh, three. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad that I listened to some um, input that you have all had on a video and I've gone with this and it's working so well I'm so thrilled that I decided to do it this way there is a problem because of the paper being thin I, cho I chose a really dark purple pen for my key I have a key down the bottom here but um, very quickly, anything that's this light purple um, was read before 2023, anything that is this blue um, is 2023 and I will continue to add to this if I continue to keep this book um, in different colours and then we've got, I did have like this purple colour that I've used in the start of the book um, to put across if I finished the series and I've got a grey if I DNF it but Aside from that, I'm really happy with how this is working. I have enough space. If the books have more than 10 in the series, I can cut the boxes in half and add on that way. So it's really flexible and I'm quite happy with how that's going. But again, you guys can't see all of the writing because of that sheen of the metallic pen, which has been the biggest downfall. I should have just used a plain pen. And as you can see, it's really messy, unfortunately, because I tried to use that one first. Um, and then this is the new colour to represent that I've completed a series. And we've got plenty of pages here to grow into. Again, I did the same kind of theme with the owned TBR. This was one that I was definitely going to get rid of, but when I worked on the series tracker and found that it worked for me, I knew that I would be able to make this work for me. The same key 
here the purple is before 2023 blue for 2023 and um, I haven't had to unhaul or DNF any books yet on my own TBR so um, so far it's looking quite clean but we can get to that with um, when we do and I will show how that looks eventually so I actually need to update this because I don't think I have for the month of March but again I'll be doing that in another video and we've got more room to grow into it because I assume that I'm going to keep having an addiction of buying books here is the author collection section and whilst I really like the idea of having this I do feel like it's not as useful as I thought it might be um, obviously it looks great when you have an author with a lot of books but when you add in ones that don't have a great deal um, uh, yeah there's not much um, to look at and um, it hasn't been something that I've really used. I don't turn to this until the end of the month. I try to leave this book alone until the end of each month so I have stuff to film in it. Um, but otherwise, um, it just looks pretty much the same aside from having some colour added to some of the books that I've read so far. I haven't added any more um, authors to this and I have a great deal of paper still left in here. So we'll see how this book goes. I might um, stop doing the author collection pages I'm not sure but um, there's plenty of room in here so 2024 could easily fit in here if I continue to use it okay so that's both books looked at um, thank you so much for spending some time with me today I'm so glad that we are at this first quarter and I could do a flip through because they're one of my favorite things to film I like looking back at how things are working for me what isn't and how I've utilized changes along the way I'm very excited about the next quarter ahead not only for books to read because there's a great amount of books that are coming out that I'm really excited for but also some new ideas I have on how to use tools on the black paper I just got a pack of pens which I'll be sharing in that video I mentioned about what to use on black paper for an incredibly cheap price because um, that's been one of the biggest issues finding pens that are inky and opaque enough that don't break the bank um, and I will be sharing that in a video I'm very excited to try and use them over the month of May because I've just set up April beforehand but again thank you so much for spending some time with me if you have any requests about what you might like to see in these books a deep dive or any other things that you would like to see see on this channel please do leave me a comment below I would be um, really thrilled to read that and I'm going to go snuggle up in bed and read a book for the rest of the night I hope that you're having a great day or night where you are and that you're reading something awesome and I will see you soon in another video bye everyone